Learning that you have type 1 diabetes can make your life suddenly feel as far from normal as possible. Living well with diabetes means new routines and keeping track of things like insulin and blood sugar that you didn't really have to think about before. But the thing is, everyone's body is a little abnormal. The fact that some people feel invigorated by a brisk 6 a.m. run is completely bonkers to others. Living with type 1 diabetes means figuring out what normal now looks like for you. A lot of people will have suggestions for what you should do to manage type 1. But understanding your new normal means understanding what's going inside of your body. Specifically, it helps to know about a little sugar molecule called glucose. Almost every cell in the human body needs glucose to survive. Your brain needs glucose to run your nervous system and keep everything working. Your muscles need glucose to move, especially when you're doing intense exercise. And your skin cells need glucose to do, well, what skin does? Protect you from germs and stuff like that. You get glucose from digesting different kinds of food, not just sugary things, but also from foods that don't taste sweet, like bread, pasta, and rice. You can even get some glucose from protein-rich foods like chicken or steak. All kinds of chemical building blocks from food get absorbed into your intestine, go into your bloodstream, and get shuttled to the cells that need them. Even though you're not constantly eating, your body constantly needs energy, and glucose is a major currency. Whenever you have some extra glucose in your bloodstream, your body has to figure out ways to save that energy for later. The liver stores glucose to be used in the short term, and the fat cells store excess glucose for the long term. Whether it's from your intestines or your liver, after the glucose had made its way into your bloodstream, it needs to get into your cells. To make this happen, you need a molecule called insulin. In people without diabetes, insulin is automatically released by the pancreas to regulate blood glucose. Kind of like how your heart beats automatically or a cruise control saves you the work of pushing the gas pedal. These things don't just happen themselves, but they can feel a little like magic. When you have type 1 diabetes, your pancreas doesn't make the insulin needed to automatically regulate blood glucose anymore. But your cells don't know that. They still need glucose, and your body still needs insulin to get the glucose to the right cells at the right time. So now, you have to supply the right amount of insulin at the right time to allow your cells to take in the glucose. Figuring out how much insulin is tricky. It depends on what you're eating and how much energy you're using throughout a day. Just like you don't know if you're following the speed limit without a speedometer in your car. You don't know if you took the right amount of insulin if you don't monitor your blood glucose levels. Like hopping behind of a wheel of a stick shift when you're used to an automatic, this can feel frustrating at first. You're already busy enough living your life, and it would be much easier if your body would just take care of itself. It's going to be an imperfect journey as you learn what your body needs on a cellular level. And that's okay. But what feels impossible at first can become totally natural with practice. Here are the top three takeaways. Number one, blood glucose levels rise when we eat and when glucose is released from the short-term stores in the liver. Number two, insulin opens the cells to let energy in, to use now or to store for later, causing blood glucose levels to drop. Number three, without enough insulin, blood glucose levels will rise, even if you don't eat. I'm Conrad Pau, a senior project manager at Diabetes Action Canada and a father of a child with type 1 diabetes. Thanks for watching. Hope you found this episode helpful.